Ah, ladies and gentlemen, there we are. Thank you so much for joining us for this panel, which is called Broadcasters' Role in the Fast-Moving TV Landscape. Now, as you've already heard over the last two days, the landscape is not just moving. It's, it's a huge battle going on. And it's a battle about infrastructure, aggregation, content. Uh, it's a battle for the hearts and minds of the consumers. And it's also a battle on where the money will go and basically who will own this, who will do this. And of course, some broadcasters are really big and they can give, you know, make a strategy that's huge. I mean, just last week, Bertelsmann, together with RTL, announced that they would put $700 million into content and they will put, you know, a service uh, online to just not offer video and series and movies, but also audiobooks and music and podcasts and magazines even. So a big answer to battle the Netflixes of the world. Um, but of course, not everybody can do this. So the question is, what are the strategies? And I have a fantastic panel of three people here. Let me first briefly introduce them. Jan Maxa, you're sitting in a cottage somewhere in the Czech countryside. I know, you're recovering. Um, but tell me, what do you do at Czech Television? What's your role? My role at uh, Czech Television is uh, twofold. I'm a director of content development, uh, meaning I deal mainly with uh, the development of uh, TV, both TV and, and web content. And I'm also director of new media, which means I deal with all our digital products, also on the design and technical and operational side. It's a pretty big role and lots of challenges. We'll, we'll discuss in a second. Uh, Baka Walden from Switzerland, SRG, also a public broadcaster. Tell us, what, what is your responsibility at your organization? Hello, everyone. Well, I'm used to work here in the building before COVID. Now it's more from home. And what we are doing as a team is uh, threefold. We are taking care of uh, the issues of digital transformation of the company, meaning uh, specific projects like the streaming platform place which we are running, but also uh, investment in film industry, uh, as well as research uh, is a big topic. And the third topic, communication. So everything we do in this complicated country of Switzerland uh, together, this is our role as a team. It also mean you, means you speak all the languages and you have all the groups. And it, I mean, Switzerland <laughs> is even more complicated than some other countries, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And Jacob uh, of Wild Mocha. First of all, thank you for supporting this event. What does Wild Mocha do and what do you do at Wild Mocha? Well, first, my position at Wild Mocha is um, this position of a vice president of a partner sales. This means that um, I am actually connected with all of our partners worldwide um, who then propose Wild Mocha to their customers. But on the other hand, I also work with many of our customers directly. I know you work with a lot of different TV channels. Um, we invited you to quickly show what, what Wild Mocha does. So maybe you, you can start with that because of, so that we better understand where you're coming from. Yes, it's a pleasure. So let me uh, share you um, quickly um, five slides that I have prepared. So well, Mocha, actually what we have is a digital media factory. And this, what that actually means is that we um, actually try to solve our customers' um, problems that to, to overcome actually the limitations of a linear TV, let's say it that way. So there is a sources fragmentation and there is a fragmentation on the side um, of the output. Um, probably most of you are already aware of the uh, um, fragmentation on the destination. So you have all the different social media channels, you have OTT platforms, you need to deliver it either in the normal um, TV um, format or in the 9 to 16 or 1 to 1. Um, sometimes it's about short form, long form. So all the different forms uh, you want to cater to your customers. Uh, on the other hand, we also have a fragmentation on the input side uh, where it's not only be the TV streams, but they can also come from uh, mobile journalists, um, even using um, their phones as a, as a camera and obviously files. So all of that basically gives you the um, the challenge that you have many different sources and many different output formats. And what we actually provide is we have a factory and provide a production chain or production line, a supply chain for our customers to actually produce what they want. 
as a very quick, very, very quickly here, um, three different examples. Most of our customers use Vault to produce near live clips. So something is happening um, and you want to clip it out and publish it right now. So speed is of essence here. Um, then after, a, let's say a sports game, you want to create a summary, so a highlight reel and want to push it out. And last but not least, um, you might have uh, some live coming in that you want to push out right now live. There's nothing faster than live, of course. And in order to do that, um, it is this was more an editorial choice and not a choice, not a question of technology that you would need to call somebody downstairs in your basement in order to set it up. Um, Quick, quest, uh, quick example here, um, during the US elections exactly one year ago, um, we um, did a huge analysis of how videos were used by broadcasters within social media. And as you can see here, um, over 600 million views on videos have happened over three and a half days only on social media only. And 800 hours of the media uh, that has been uh, shown on the digital part were actually live streams. At the end, we were also looking how fast customers or non-customers could actually uh, publish those videos from their TV channels. And as you can see there in the race, um, our customers can do it very, very fast. That was this part. And then maybe a very interesting innovation that we recently um, introduced is um, the ability to actually decompose an existing TV news channel and recompose it into a 9.16 uh, viewing. And the reason for that is that a mobile phone is not just a mini TV, but it is actually a new kind of device. And most of the people just hold it vertically. And you can see then on the right side, it just um, is so much nicer to look at it. Um, if you look at the full screen uh, vertically, then if it would only take one third of the screen as on the left. And that is already um, what I just wanted to introduce you and hope um, to get questions afterwards. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, before we move to our uh, to other panelists, um, this is a panel with three speakers. I just did another panel with five speakers. It's very hard to you know, take a lot of questions for the audience, but in this case, we can take a lot of questions from the audience. So feel free to put questions in the chat and I'll see them and I'll ask them to the speakers. Now, Jan and Bakel, challenges for broadcasters. What, let, let's start with Bakel. What, what is the most, what is the biggest challenge right now for uh, a small public broadcaster in Switzerland? So different languages, everything. What is the thing you guys are working on that is hard? Well, I'd say very hard is getting uh, the past linked uh, with the future, meaning we have our 90th anniversary. Uh, for 90 years ago, we started with radio and then later television. So this we can do very well for a lot of decades. Now, getting all of this in the nonlinear world, you know, all the buzzwords you know from streaming, the streaming wars um, for audio, for video, to link this and not to lose the audience that still is interested in broadcast, but at the same time make a very compelling offer against all the big uh, tech companies uh, from America. I think this is probably the, the thing which uh, keeps us awake at night the most. And I understand from, from the conversation we had before that um, this, this really affects the, the way you build up your teams and the way you, you, know, you need to protect your staff as well, right? Because you know, it's not like you put a startup together and you know move fast and break things you are in an existing organization and you want to move it to something new how, how do you do that what, what is the thing you do right now well absolutely because <clears throat> normally 20 years ago 30 years ago we used to be the number one place to go if you want to go into media business you come to a broadcaster well obviously those days uh, have been long gone in zurich just around the corner uh, it's the biggest uh, google office outside yeah. of the united states so that means a lot of people are attracted to that so i think what we can offer as a broadcaster especially as a public broadcaster is purpose i think a lot of young people are looking for this we have a, a remit we have a goal uh, something we we offer to the public so this is a focus to to, to introduce this, uh, to also change our internal structures, to be more flexible and uh, to actually, you know, compete on, on values. And I think this is something what public broadcasters and certainly Jan could relate to this uh, can certainly do. Yeah, it's super interesting. Completely different 
form of competition, but a, a really big one. Yeah, no, what about in the Czech Republic? W what is the biggest challenge you face there? Well, I could almost repeat the word, word by word what, <laughs> what Michael said, because, you know, we are even 10 years older. Uh, Czech radio is approaching 100 yeah. years and, and, and Czech TV is approaching 70 years of, uh, yeah. of existence. Uh, we are we're right now in the, I would say, closing phase of a, of a transition uh, from, from a, you know, public traditional public broadcaster mainly free to air offering uh, obviously some 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 digital services but mostly as add-ons catch up uh, some archive viewing uh, you know some some specific products but now we're really transitioning into a into a fully 21st century offering with with full blown um, uh, range of digital products and and, because you, and you, you have, you have a lot of content. channels, right? You have a lot of channels. I mean, you both have a lot of different TV channels. Yes, of uh, course. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, <laughs> Dutch <laughs> only have three, but yeah. And a, a lot of different channels, that, that also means that both of you have 90 or 100 years of content stored away somewhere. Is, is this something that also helps um, give you an edge? I mean, are there archives in a way what could be another competitive edge for the public broadcasts? Well, you know, from our perspective, definitely. Uh, we we haven't been very good at using it in the past. Uh, it starts with uh, not enough data available, metadata. You, you need, obviously, to get it out of the archive. So what we're doing is, uh, first of all, offering a lot also to universities to, you know, in terms of news, just to spread it around as a cultural heritage. But at the same time, the investment we're doing in series, in films, to use it uh, on our streaming services. And, uh, you know, if you launch a streaming service, for example, nowadays, you have to have a USB. It just cannot be more of, of the same entertainment or, or foreign series. So there comes our legacy in um, and, and, and certainly getting uh, all the content available, discoverable uh, and connected with data. This is the biggest challenge in this field, I'd say. Yeah. And um, I mean, you have uh, several languages to take care of. You have the Czech language to take care of, uh, Jan. Do you, I mean, it, it's, um, and I'll come back to you as well, Jacob, because I know you have insights into a lot of different broadcasters and the challenges they have. But um, when it comes to languages, it, it, is, it is a super interesting time that a Korean series can, you know, be a worldwide hit in Korean. I mean, th there's something happening in the world that's completely new that, you know, there's an international audience that can be reached that's open to languages they don't speak. I mean, Jan, I know for, for I mean, there's a big Czech hit in the Netherlands. What, what did they call it in English? They're called Buurman and Buurman in Dutch. It's animation series from the past. You'll know them, uh, Met and Pet, that's it. I mean, so, some of the Czech audiovisual content was cherished across Europe for many, many years. What is happening in that field now? Do you have international ambitions with the content you produce from the public broadcaster? Well, yes, of course. I mean, we, we, we uh, you know, we, we, we co-produce uh, uh, with uh, broadcasters in, in, um, in Slovakia, we visit regularly, we co-produce with Poland, with uh, Austria, with Germany, uh, with German French channel Arte. Uh, there's even a there's even a channel a cable channel in in the U.S. which specializes in in European content in strange languages, which buys <laughs> <laughs> our strange. series quite yeah. regularly. <laughs> it's probably a lot of Dutch material there as well. No, but but are you also because this is a in for many public broadcasters uh, a question if they should or should not uh, have their originals also be shared via the Netflixes or the YouTubes even of the world, you know, do you, do you keep it in-house in your own uh, system or do you use whatever is out there? I was just wondering if you guys have particular opinions on that. Well, I can, uh, you know, quickly report on the Swiss situation. If you look at the international distribution rights, they are with the producers and it's a great opportunity. Uh, we're not from Korea or from Switzerland or uh, Czechoslovakia to have really this kind of um, 
um, this, this content distributed. It's a bit different if you look at our own territory. Uh, I'd prefer to have then our content, at least for a certain time, also exclusive with us because we take the creative risk uh, together with the producers and, and develop also talent. And then it's a bit difficult just to, to give it away. But it's an ongoing discussion, uh, which at least in Switzerland is not yet finished. There is a lot of there is a lot of let's say mixed experience from the more advanced corners <laughs> of uh, Europe, especially Scandinavia, where you know some public broadcasters were cooperating in good faith with big platforms and then and, and ended up basically losing rights to the content in the in the subsequent seasons. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we are yeah. very, we're very open to to cooperation with anybody because obviously as a Small country uh, broadcaster will we're, we're in in search for additional funding for our content always, but but it yeah. has to be done on on fair and equitable terms. Yeah, and I know for the creators, for Netflix, for instance, really hard. They pay, but they don't pay for the few, you know it's one off payment and then you're done and it can be a huge hit and you don't profit at all from it. Jacob, you see a lot of broadcasters. I think you would argue based on the the service you provide that it is essential for broadcasters to spread their material across as many different platforms as possible. Is that right? Well, absolutely. So, I mean, our customers use Walt Mocha mostly for, uh, let's say, hot content. So content that is produced um, in the same time as it is aired or very, uh, very close to it. So most um, are using it for uh, um, news and uh, for, for sports. But I mean, if you look at sports as an example, um, Roland Garros as a tennis game in, in Paris, um, and then you, what you also can see is that the viewer habits actually change. So the um, before, I mean, you only had it on the screen and since Roland Garros typically is over the day, if you're a tennis fan, you could only see the summary in the evening at home. Um, but nowadays um, you can actually tune into the live stream. You can tune in into the live stream at any moment, well, if your work allows it, of course, um, and and watch it. And moreover, um, you can tune in in any of the courts. So, I mean, there are 18 courts that are played in parallel. France Television only has two or three um, TV channels and they will not block them um, just uh, to do tennis everywhere. So what they actually did is they built it on their OTT platform to make it consumable. Um, but at the same time, they also um, take short uh, clips out of it. So highlights what is currently happening. So set a uh, ball or something like that and just push it to social media because that actually brings people back to the broadcaster into their OTT platform, but also into their environment of the TV. Basically, by getting the audience back into um, your uh, environment, um, that is the moment where the broadcaster either fulfills its goal, but also to make money sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah. Even public even public broadcast does make money that way um, by selling an advertisement on the OTT streams, as example. If, if that's that allowed, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, if, allowed. if it is allowed, Depends exactly. Depends the country, exactly. I mean, uh, Bakul, you've launched an OTT service recently, right? Um, hmm. Maybe you could talk about the, the strategy there, because Play Suisse, it's called, um, it's completely ad free, so that's why I'm picking up on the ad part. But you nevertheless build it because you want to reach more people with it. What was the idea behind it? Well, the idea behind it uh, was especially in Switzerland with the four language regions, and you pay uh, a license fee, uh, as in other countries as well. And people tend to look only and watch content from their own language region, and they say, okay, it's all nice. But why do we pay so much uh, license fee if we don't uh, have the whole catalog available? And that was the starting point that we also now offer uh, French uh, content uh, from the French speaking part, also to viewers from German speaking Switzerland, the same also with Italian speaking and, and Romansh. So really showing the whole catalog of SRG. 
we're doing that with a very uh, um, advanced and at the same time, let's say, classic streaming service, so people feel right at home. Because one of the big questions, picking up a bit on, on, on Jacob's input, is really, first of all, who is finding all that content, uh, in which way, and eventually who's watching it, it all. It's, it's, it seems that there are too many streaming services out there, <laughs> too much uh, content as well. Exactly. Um, I think with media had a, had a recent study about 70% of people saying it's just too much. So we said, okay, we, we need to be part of the game to reach target groups, first of all, who do not watch broadcast channels per se, and at the same time to make this content available. Um, and at the same time, we, we had this USP and what we see, and this relates to uh, your question, Monique, before, it works quite well with uh, content from other regions so it's not korea but you know sometimes it feels <laughs> that the french speaking part is as far from german speaking switzerland we see about 30 percent of our usage is with subtitles from a different region so um, we've been very surprised by this we haven't been so optimistic about it it seems to work so people get used to also watching content uh, across regions yeah. yeah you wanted to respond to that I just wanted to uh, expand very quickly on what um, what Bakel just said about uh, about there being too much content. I'm absolutely absolutely in agreement with that because our own uh, our own experience now is that while we're you know uh, uh, preparing to release our new uh, video platform, we're actually not just expanding uh, the content we're offering, but we're also taking some of the old content away because. It's lying there unused and nobody's actually interested in it. So, so, oh, so what? Because so you're launching, yeah, you're launching in December, right? You have a whole it, new platform and a whole new service launching in December. What, what, what is right. on it that is different than what you can see on the, the broadcast TV? I'm sorry, could you rephrase the, oh, the What the do question? you offer via this new platform that is different from what you offered before? I mean, you said you take away some things curious what you are taking away and also you're adding some new what is the new well there are, there, are, there will be many new things uh, I mean uh, obviously there will be new design and new 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 functions uh, on the on the platform itself uh, uh, our current platform is more of a you know catch up and 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 uh, searching the archive service what we want to uh, give viewers is is what they would expect from uh, from a from a video platform today which is which is something which helps them navigate through the uh, huge uh, amount of video data which is in 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 Czech TV's uh, archive which will offer them you know easy uh, labeling and easy uh, links from one content yeah. one piece of content to another uh, we're adding something which we haven't done or we haven't focused on uh, so far, uh, which is web-only uh, video content, and uh, the stuff which we're which we which we found is not really something that uh, viewers are looking for at, at uh, in our digital products is uh, is you know is is like additional bonus bonus uh, context information. For example, if there's a historical film or a documentary. Uh, we tended to have a very mm, deep offering of uh, contextual uh, information in text, graphics, I don't know, little videos, long videos. And basically what we found is people want to watch our shows, but if they want to uh, know about context, they go to Wikipedia or to some established source. So, so we now think it's much more important to allow them you know to cross link in rather than going in depth in in each piece of uh, uh content we have to offer them the breadth of of uh, the whole uh, and, and easy access to the whole breadth of content uh yeah. tv has and produces and and uh, yeah that back go ahead well, just a very quick uh, point uh, Jan made in, in terms of also limiting even the content or taking uh, some off. And that, that was a very interesting experience also for us at, at PlaceVis that uh, two years ago at a management meeting, uh, I was introducing the plans for the platform. And one of the questions was, uh, well, actually, do we have enough content? Uh, the big players, Netflix, they have 4,000, 5,000 titles and we haven't even produced so much. Now, two years later, after the first year, we see we have too much. We need to limit it. 
uh, we are now about 2,700 titles and we feel not much more than 3,000. So actually we have more than we need because people just have a difficulty finding things. So it's really going more into depth really curating it and not just throwing everything out you've been producing for the last uh, uh, 50 years in television. And that was a big learning for us. And uh, uh, we were afraid in the beginning of not having too much. Now it's the other way around. And I guess the uh, pick up with uh, Jacob as well, the, once it's out there promoting it and uh, realizing that the viewers live in a world of lots of channels and, you know, the mobile phone and the TV and the laptops and, um, Jacob, if you look at uh, the pushing out of content to all these different channels, where is the most interesting thing happening at the moment content-wise and where is it really interesting uh, for an economical point of view, for making money, advertising? I mean, what channels are at the moment the most interesting for your clients? I think the most interesting is um, everything where you do have um, fresh content, um, where you actually want to get people in and they want also to have somebody on the whole journey. So not only basically saying, oh, you can look on my content on Facebook. I mean, okay, that's nice. Or you can look on my content at uh, TV at home. Okay, that's still good. But if you have one fan, who follows you the whole journey because if he is commuting, he cannot block TV, but he can definitely look um, on his phone and consume content from you. Um, if he is on uh, on his work, he might uh, have something on his laptop at home, then he either has a connected TV or he has a, a just a normal linear TV in order to access the content. I think the, the whole, there's a kind of a delinearization uh, going on. And I think, um, I know Jan and uh, Bakker, you do have both linear channels, but I think you see that as well as, a, um, as something coming um, where you need to cater for more an on-demand viewing. Um, I, I wouldn't say it needs to be necessarily something where I search for content. It can still be basically catered to, but I think there is a moment where I say, okay, now I want to see that as example. Um, so that is very important. And I think one thing that um, Buckle said is about how do you find content? That means that actually when you publish and you produce the content, it is absolutely paramount that you have also metadata visit so that it can actually be shown on the OTT app um, of uh, the uh, broadcaster easily that you can find it and that it can be proposed. And last but not least, I think very often what I see with um, content owners is that they own more content or more rights to content that they can actually broadcast. So especially in, in sports, but also in news, um, there are much more coming in than goes out on the three, four different linear channels that the broadcaster have. And if you can actually build um, an environment where your customers can also have access to all the other content where you have rights to, obviously you can either earn money or if you're a public TV, um, have an um, audience which is more satisfied. Yeah. I think that is a very, very strong reason to, to look into that, yeah. Yeah, you, so you are for expanding the, the offer with you know, content that's there already, basically. Um, but if you look at, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, it's, you know, it's both. You have to both expand and, 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 and contract as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's not just one direction. I think, I think uh, Buckley used the, the perfect word, you know, curation. Uh, it's, also, it's also a term which we use all the time with, with, my, uh, with my video platform team because, because you have to provide uh, context and, and guidance to, to people to just to find their way uh, around. Uh, obviously, this, this, this issue which, which uh, Jakob just mentioned, the, uh, you know, basically expanding the number of uh, channels uh, uh, online for the content we cannot uh, we cannot fit in our in our free to air channels in our linear channels sure yeah we we're, we're obviously doing this uh, but this is a temporary thing uh, during uh, during certain sports events or during certain um, if there are too many things happening at the same time which which yeah. cannot fit on the news channel 
but uh, I think yeah, curation, leadership, you know, guidance. That's those are the keywords which which we live live with now. Is there? I mean, I'm I'm really interested to hear if uh, assume that all the platforms are in place and you have you know you push it out and you know so all the technical things are solved. I mean, what is the new kind of content that is most interesting for U.S. broadcasters? to commission or develop? I mean, what is new? What is, or, or is it maybe not about being new? I know, I mean, some of the best viewed content on, uh, on, on Netflix and other streamers is a series of 20 years ago. So it doesn't always have to be new, right? I mean, but if you commission new things, do you commission differently now that you in a, live in a world of on-demand everywhere consumable content than you did before? Um, I'd, I'd be curious to know what is new. Uh, Jan, maybe you go first. Sure. Well, you know, again, it's a bit of both. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very traditional uh, in believing that uh, it's always the story that counts and the, the principles of good stories are rather old and, and not changing uh, very much uh, over the millennia. But uh, on the other hand, uh, certainly there's a big difference between, uh, you know, especially free to air linear uh, uh, broadcasting in a especially in a small small country like ours, even the very specialized channels like, like arts channel or sports channel, they still cater for a very widely targeted audience. Whereas online, uh, we can be all, we, 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 are, we are doing the opposite. We are almost like razor sharp in our, in our offering. We are re really looking to, to uh, have something for everybody in the, in the proverbial uh, long tail. So yeah, I know, I know. that to me is the main difference, uh, which, which... But, but let's be specific. I know there were two things you mentioned before. I mean, the popularity of Czech fairy tales, as well as the Czech rap scene. I have no idea. But tell us about that. Yeah, well, well, one of our, one of our, uh, one of the, one of the digital only uh, uh, programs, which we're, which we're launching together with the launch of the, of the platform, is the is a series about the Czech about Czech rap scene, and uh, I was amazed uh, by by the fact that uh, I, not by the fact that I didn't know anything about it, which was quite natural, uh, given that I'm an old boomer. But uh, but I was quite amazed how big the scene is, you know, in uh, completely hidden from the eyes of a, of a of an average person. These guys are known internationally; they have millions of views on 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 YouTube. And and if it was if it was not for the for the for the new video platform and for our new approach, we would probably not uh, consider doing a several part uh, uh, documentary series about them. And so now we're you know, discovering this new world, which is at one point uh, on one hand is very uh, precisely targeted on on a very specific uh, target group, but, but on the other hand can be a start of something much bigger if, if we if we manage to transition that that topic uh, to the to the from the digital screen to the traditional screen so to so to say yeah. oh, Abak, do you have different things you commission or uh, see becoming very popular maybe you already commissioned them before but suddenly now they find a new audience well, it's exactly as like Jan described in the mix. So if you if you launch a platform, and I think that goes for the big uh, American ones, uh, but also for us, people are looking for content they know, content they have been watching uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, even content that has been very successful sometimes on broadcast. They still know the brand and they want to have this on the new platform. And at the same time, uh, if you commission something new, we haven't been doing it yet. So still, if you commission, we have a very broadcast focus uh, because still, you know, it's a huge audience and it brings also, also in advertising money. But obviously in the mid and long term, we need to commission differently in terms of the scripts, uh, you know, how bold can you be? How, how, how young is the talent, fresh is the talent or different stories you tell. Um, so again, you have, you know, you, you keep the old things that work and you add new things and this this makes it so incredibly difficult because whether or not it's the content or it's the technical part of it or if it's the marketing everything about the streaming service is so incredibly 
uh, challenging. Uh, it feels like, okay, you need to have a little player and you put in some videos and you press play and it can't be that difficult. Uh, it is uh, actually, and you know, from my own experience, I think the two things I most underestimated in my life, having the first child and uh, also launching your first streaming service. I think both of those areas, you're very surprised uh, once you uh, get into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, well, we, we have about 10 minutes left. So audience members, if you want to ask questions, don't wait. Um, uh, there's two things that I want to discuss. And uh, one of them specifically is about um, the financial part of it. But as public broadcasters, you might not be as focused on advertising as some of the commercial players in this field. But nevertheless, I'm interested to hear what your view is. And, uh, and the other thing is, and it's a much bigger question, it's about cooperation. I mean, the digitalization of the whole industry makes that you can, you know, take things apart and put them back together and you can outsource quite a lot of your services. So you can just buy recommendation engines and, you know, use the Bob Mocha for social distribution, et cetera, et cetera. But there also seems to be a development, um, which is very interesting, is that, okay, how do we make sure that from an advertising point of view that we know our audience better than the Googles, Facebooks, et cetera, do. And that in different European countries, you have corporations where uh, media organizations start to band together and uh, you know, make, have a, a joint ID to log in. I know that's the case in Switzerland. It's also the case in you know, quite a few countries by now, Belgium, et cetera, where you suddenly have new corporations that become possible under the threat of these you know, huge companies that seem to be taking away all the audience at the same time. Uh, I was wondering what kind of corporations uh, are new and have been established because of this pressure from outside. And I think and that's a question to all three of you, that the kind of cooperation that we now need to um, yeah, we keep the place or uh, you know, do really well in this uh, TV landscape. Who wants to go first? Well, maybe as you mentioned, Switzerland, I'll, I'll do a very quick tour in Switzerland, um, because obviously um, I don't see a way that we are better or smarter than uh, Google and Facebook in terms of data, in terms of knowing the, the users, but, you know, obviously getting some steps there and uh, a login and, and working with data is the is the first is really key to that uh, we are not allowed to have advertising on our platform but already having uh, data we can uh, improve the user experience we can work with is incredibly helpful and so we are working together also with uh, private uh, or commercial um, broadcasters who also uh, launch and also editors from the print business who also want to go into everyone for, with different uh, uh, you know intentions some for advertising some for just user experience reasons but i think it doesn't make sense to build five logins, seven streaming platforms, and eventually no one will use uh, each one of them. So in some areas working together, and we hope by the end of the year, we have a third party login together with the editors uh, to, to, to have this. And uh, yeah, eventually I think it's really about um, sharing some of the costs uh, probably also working together on the inside. And the, and the second part, and that goes for public broadcasting, uh, so the direction of Jan, uh, certainly looking at some European perspectives, whether or not it's about recommendation engines or other things, I think is also helpful to just to exchange knowledge and maybe here and there even sharing some technology that, that could be the way forward. Jan, do you see different kinds of corporations uh, at your place as well? Well, I must say my answer again could be very similar to 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 Bacal's because uh, because you know we are also very limited in uh, in the kind of advertising we are allowed to have uh, both on TV and uh, on our digital uh, platforms. Uh, we are also uh, exploring the possibilities of joining forces either with uh, public broadcasters in the neighboring countries or with private broadcasters in Czech Republic or both. Yeah. Uh, all of which are somewhere in the process of building something. I think that the, the luck we have so far, and it won't be very long, but, but there is not so much pressure from the big international players because uh, obviously a country with uh, 10 million people and a, and a strange language and, and the not on the <laughs> richest scale of, of, yeah. of European economies is, is, is currently little bit beyond the uh, under the horizon you know unlike for example Poland which is now uh, uh, which where Netflix is very heavily uh, focusing 
but we we realize that this is <laughs> this this time the time we have will not will not last very long. So we're trying to get prepared. Yeah. But I think first we have to get our own act together b- before before seeing where we can you know who we can join forces with. But it's certainly yeah. it's, it's but it, but it, it is a, it's, it, it's a challenging thing because I think uh, in in I mean I come from a small country as well. In in a lot of countries. On the one hand, you want to cooperate, but these are your competitors, so you build your own system, your platform, and then it's too late, and it's 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 not easy. Let's put it this way: it's not easy. Uh, Jacob, you you Jacob, you see a lot of this happening across the world because you have clients across the world. Do you see any new kinds of cooperation or a new kind of integration between service suppliers and and broadcasters and operators, of course, because it's probably more where you are, are active. Yeah, absolutely, and. Um... And yes, we we see it on very uh, many levels actually at the same time. So so one of that is uh, as example, um, there's a Welsh public broadcaster S4C um, that is using Worldmarker, and what they do is um, that they not only produce the content for their own social media and their own channels, but they also then distribute it to uh, many affiliates um, who then are reusing that content. So that is also a kind of a corporation. And obviously also this content exchange, there is somewhere mon- uh, money in it. I don't know where it is flowing from whom to whom, but um, I'm sure that they don't do it just for fun. Um, and so so that is one of the, so that you can use a platform like ours in order to uh, federalize content all over the place with other players, with other affiliates in order to use it. And technically, it's just about to be an open platform, to be able to integrate with the existing infrastructure um, of um, our customers, to be able to integrate with um, all the different ingesting methods and uh, and uh, publication methods and uh, different social media and um, graphic tools and ad insertion at the end. So being able to be open, um, not being a closed platform, but to cater for whatever the needs are. Yeah. This means also it, it is it's not cooperation, but it's keeping an open structure so you can yeah. um, either develop yourself, which I, I would hope a lot of development will take place in Europe for all the new kind of things that are going to happen. But if you don't, you can have a platform that's so open that you can also change vendors when need be and then you work with the most active and intelligent and smart ones uh, when it's needed. I mean, we only have four minutes left. If you look ahead, all three of you, I mean, Broadcasters, especially public broadcasters, um, they, they have a task to that, that to bring people together in a way. I mean, they, they have a special task. Their task is not to make money or to be, you know, develop uh, startups and, and make money from new tech. They, their task is to make what they make and bring it to people. If you look ahead with everything that's happening around us, and there's a lot happening at the moment, it does feel like a turning point again in what's happening in media and tech. Um, where will the where will you be in five or ten years? What will have happened? Let's put it positive. What will ideally have happened? <laughs> Jan, what do you think? Everybody, every child in the whole wide world will be watching Czech fairy tales, right? <laughs> For one. And because of you, Czech rap, you know, is top of Spotify. What else? <laughs> Well, I think quite a few Czech uh, kids are already watching Czech fairy tales on their mobiles. So <laughs> I'm not sure whether this is this is something to 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 you know to, to predict for the for the five it's years. It's already happening. Now. It's already yeah. happening. Uh, well, I, one of the things we certainly need to need to need to solve is is our is our financing because because our financing uh, as defined by Czech law is not ready for 21st century because it's still still based on a on the ownership of a TV set, believe it or not. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's that's I would say the most pressing issue for Czech yeah. TV to 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 make our politicians understand that in the twenty first century. New this, is, yeah. this is it's not a new. very good definition of of, uh, of how 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 a public yeah. broadcaster should be financed, and uh, provided we pass that test, well, uh, you know, I I, I really I, I really see us. Um, I think. I think public broadcasters who are not dependent on, on on advertising revenue and therefore can afford to experiment with the with the new models of distribution, which 
for a commercial <laughs> operator, it's very hard because because you have to give something up and you don't know what you're getting uh, instead of that. We're basically we, we just have to spend our money uh, wisely so that we so that we so that we exp so that we you, I like this idea. exploit Probably and utilize this. Yeah. Probably this space, space, space where the real experiment can take place because yeah. of the lesser pressure of the money thing. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Buckle, we, oh, we, we really 30 seconds each. Buckle. Okay, very quickly. Well, the first six, 65 years, we had a really great run. I think the last 20, 25 years have been more challenging, commercial groups coming in and, and big tech now. And hopefully in five to 10 years, I'm very optimistic about this. We're going to turn the tide a bit so we, we we find our footing again we're a bit more on the offense not only defense and you know as we've always done entertain inform and educate people okay great thank you jacob last word goes to you and then we have to wrap up the, the speed of transformation in my opinion from linear play out uh, to more event-based and on-demand consumption will even increase and we just want to continue um, to uh, be with our customers in order to uh, actually confront those challenges and uh, win um, customers on that uh, channel just and um, stay relevant and innovative as we are today. Also, well, in 10 years from now. <laughs> thank you so much. Gentlemen, I hope you can make this work. We'll be watching you. <laughs> thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.